from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. God has prepared things for those who love him that no eye has seen or ear has heard or that haven't crossed the mind of any human being. God has revealed these things to us through the Spirit. The Spirit searches everything, including the depth of God. Who knows a person's depths except their own spirit that lives in them? In the same way, no one has known the depths of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the world's spirit, but God's spirit, so that we can know the things given to us by God. These are the things we're talking about, not with words taught by human wisdom, but with words taught by the Spirit. For we are interpreting spiritual things to spiritual people. But people who are unspiritual do not accept the things from God's Spirit. They are foolishness to them and cannot be understood because they can only be comprehended in a spiritual way. Spiritual people comprehend all things, but they themselves are not often understood by anyone. For who has known the mind of the Lord, and who will advise God? Yet we have the mind of Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, quiet our hearts and minds, open our ears, that we may not only sense your spirit active and present in this room, but active and present in our lives. Teach us, we pray, in Christ's name. Amen. Did you hear it? The Apostle Paul wrote about a contrast between human wisdom and spiritual wisdom. It was actually bold enough to suggest that people who are unspiritual do not comprehend or understand the things that are revealed by God's Spirit. People who have little or no spiritual focus consider the things of God to be foolishness. Spiritual people, however, the author concluded, have the capacity to know the mind of Christ. What an interesting phrase. To know the mind of Christ. Knowing the mind of Christ is actually a common theme in Paul's writings. Probably my favorite New Testament doxology is found in Romans 11. Paul writes, Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are God's judgments and actions that are beyond the human ability to fully comprehend. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been God's counselor? who has given a gift to God and has been paid back by God. We sit Sunday after Sunday and we take a lot for granted, don't we? As you sit in this beautiful sanctuary this morning and you meditate on the things of God, do you have either the desire or the inner assurance that you have the mind of Christ? 
Do you believe? Do you believe that God is present and active in your life, leading and guiding and directing your thoughts and actions so that you know without any doubt that God is helping you to achieve the dreams and goals that have been given to you as a unique gift? Do you have the confidence to believe that God is opening doors or closing doors at just the right time and in just the right way so that, like Paul, you believe that God is continuously revealing all these things to you? Those are actually the kinds of questions I have wrestled with for years. I don't believe, I don't believe that it's possible to be an inquisitive and thoughtful follower of Jesus and not entertain questions about seeking to discover the will of God in our lives. If you have ever asked yourself questions like, why am I here? What is it that God created me to do or to be? Do I have a divine purpose in my life? Then, my friend, you are seeking by even those questions that you're asking, you are seeking to know the will of God. It's been my experience after 35 years in pastoral ministry that almost all people want to matter. We want to make a difference in the world. We want to invest ourselves in something that will leave a mark that says we have done more in this life besides simply breathe in and breathe out. But finding our God-given purpose in life is not easy. It's possible. It's absolutely possible, but it's not easy. God spoke to the prophet Isaiah, recorded in chapter 43, and declared that Isaiah had been called by name, that he was precious, honored, and loved by God. God affirmed in that dialogue that Isaiah had purpose in life. Well, like Isaiah, I believe that God has, is, or will called each one of us. We have a purpose. We have meaning. We have been entrusted with gifts that need to be identified and developed so that we too can have the assurance that we have been called to do something extraordinary for God. The process of discovering God's will is spiritual discernment. Now let me tell you what spiritual discernment is not. It is not extrasensory perception. Spiritual discernment is not mystical intuition. Discernment is what the Apostle Paul called a spiritual gift, which probably is best described as a spiritual intuition that comes as a result of an active relationship with God. Discernment is a keen spiritual perception, an insight, if you will, that helps us to see clearly ourselves as well as our place in God's mission and ministry. Discernment is what helps us to see a particular situation with surprising and unusual clarity. In the New Testament, the Greek word for discernment means to distinguish, to investigate, to examine, 
to scrutinize, to question. Discernment is the process of searching for the wisdom and insight of God. Remember how Paul phrased it? We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we might know the gifts of God that have been freely given to us, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit. Socrates said, know thyself. Psychologists and therapists have worked diligently for centuries to help people, to assist people, to try to discern and discover who they are and what they feel led to do with their lives. Preachers and teachers in the community of faith encourage people to connect with the Holy Spirit so that they can grow to understand their God-given purpose and calling. You see, for the person of faith, All self-awareness, all self-knowledge is spiritual discernment. It comes as a result of spiritual discernment. But spiritual discernment is bigger than gathering information gleaned from a personality or a vocational test, inventory, even utilizing a spiritual gift, gift assessment tool. Now, all those things can be helpful to us, but it's more than that. Spiritual discernment begins with prayer. If we want to know God and we want to know God's direction for us in our lives, we must develop a relationship with God. We must ask God for guidance in the choices that we make. We must seek divine wisdom and insight. But prayer is often understood as merely talking to God. But I say unto you that prayer is also listening to God. Prayerful listening is the foundation of spiritual discernment. The psalmist said it, Be still, be still and know that I am God. Being still and reflective and spiritually open and attentive is a way for us to listen to the voice of God. God created us and instilled within us unique dreams and desires. We need time to simply be quiet and listen to the still, small voice inside of us. We can't ever grow to understand the plan of God for our lives until we are able to listen. And prayer is more than simply giving God a list of wants or demands. It's listening. Another dimension of the art of listening is listening to other people. It's important. It's very important for us to surround ourselves with trusted spiritual friends who will not only affirm us but will challenge us by speaking the truth in love. Having spiritual friends is a valuable way for us to discern God's voice. I can look back and tell you a list of influential people in my life who have played an important role in helping me to discern God's plan for me. I start with parents and grandparents, my wife, various pastors and teachers and co-workers and dear friends. They all have functioned as important voices for God. They have helped me 
to discern my spiritual gifts. Listening to the wisdom of friends means that we're open and vulnerable to them. But being open and vulnerable is difficult, difficult for many of us. And yet I dare say that if you look back, you too can see friends or loved ones who have influenced you deeply and set a positive direction for your life. So to be sure, other people help us grow in discerning our gifts. We dare not, we dare not overlook one other valuable voice. Experience, don't you know, is a great teacher. We learn from both positive and negative experiences. Our family of origin is not accidental. The environment where we were nurtured is not accidental. Who we are is the sum total of the education we possess, the interests and skills that we have developed, and the kind of temperament that is uniquely ours. And God wraps it all together. Even when we have a hard time believing it, God wraps it all together and helps you to become a unique person in the plan of God. There are so many people, so many people in the world today who are searching for meaning. They are looking for direction. They are looking for purpose in their life. But I think sadder still are the people who are lost that sit in our pews in churches around the globe that have no purpose in their life. Far too many of us don't know who we are, nor do we have any idea the spiritual gift God has graciously invested in us. Some of us sit around on the sidelines of life with a litany of I can't or I won't or I don't have time. But my friends, you are called by God to make a difference. So no matter how old or young you are, no matter how educated or uneducated, skilled or unskilled, we have a role to play in the plan of God. Life becomes richer and more meaningful if we will pray and listen and in enter in to the process of discovering and utilizing the gift that God has given to you and to me. God's call. God is calling. What are you going to do with the call? Amen. Thank you for being with us this Sunday morning. We trust that God has spoken to you. Let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What a great way to end a worship service. Part of that dialogue of faith is that through faith, you become not only a disciple of Jesus, but an instrument of grace and peace in our world. God has called you for such a time as this. Know that it is God who has called you, and has redeemed you, and sustains you in all that you do.